Welcome to Dare to Leap, a conversation and community supporting women just like you to gain the freedom, flexibility, and financial security you desire and deserve with CEO and founder of Virtual Expert Training, Kathy Guggenauer. This is Dare to Leap, and now here's the powerhouse tiara-wearing Kathy Guggenauer. Welcome to Dare to Leap podcast. We have a really, really exciting guest today. Her name is Monica Bijou. You're going to love Monica. She is just exotic as her name sounds. And she is the founder and CEO of Decide to Move. As a licensed psychotherapist and business strategist, she uses her decades of experience to help high achievers aspiring entrepreneurs, and veterans to find the jewel inside to have financial freedom and live a life of purpose. She's created a personalized systematic strategy using her 12-step model, Decided to Move, which focuses on transformation, transition, growth, and development. And using that, she helps her clients to obtain financial freedom and live that life of purpose. Now, I have spoken with Monica many times, and I can tell you guys that she's doing so much. I can't even begin to tell you. I can't even begin to list all of the things that she does, all of the degrees that she has, all of the things she is pursuing. So I'm just going to turn it over to you, Monica, and let you finish your own bio here and tell us all about you. Hi, Kathy. Thank you so much, first of all, for having me here. I'm so excited to connect with you again. Um, like, like you said, I do so much, right? <laughs> so many things. And so um, first, I'm in the military. That's why I love working with my veterans. Um, I have found that with veterans going from, you know, getting ready to retire or separating from the military, they clearly do not have a a, a real understanding of where they want to go and what they decide that they want to do. So I have found myself taking off my therapy hat and putting on my business coaching hat quite often. So that's when I decided to start my business. Um, Decide to Move is a 12-step model, something that came to me uh, years ago in 2007. So I'm kind of dating myself. Uh, back then. And that was a while ago when I was doing my human resource background. But as you were mentioning, um, I'm a two-time best-selling author. I uh, have been in three collaborative projects working on my fourth. And all of this, mind you, has been since 2018 when I came back to the States because I was overseas for six years. Um, I am, a, I consider myself a business strategist because I truly believe in helping people from taking their ideas and turn it into a successful business um, as you mentioned, so that because I'm finding so many even on people who want to become entrepreneurs do not have that ability to like, they, it's like, I'm so good at so many things. How do I hone it and narrow it down? Obviously, I had that problem when I started because I have so many things that I do. Um, also have my own podcast uh, named after my company. And uh basically a speaker, international speaker, as well as a trainer. Um, and so many things, many things that I do. So to answer your question, how do I manage it all? As we were asking, talking about before, I literally am very strategic with my time. I set clear boundaries and I'm intentional. So people often wonder, like think boundaries is a bad thing, but no, if I don't have boundaries around, hey, this is the time that I'm set out to accomplish whatever I'm accomplishing, then I would never get anything done. So B and I is what I call it, setting clear boundaries and intentional with my time. So that's how I manage to do so many things all in a day. Wow. I can't even believe how fast you said all of that. <laughs> I, I, I'm having to breathe. I'm having to have a little breath here. <laughs> and I talk fast because I'm from Louisiana. So... <laughs> Really? So I didn't know that people from Louisiana talked fast. Oh, very much so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is so interesting. No, yeah. I would have thought that they talk slower because they're from the South, but you no. do talk really fast, yes, which I no. love. I'm a fast talker too. Me too. I actually listen to a lot of things on extra speed. So I I rather wait till it's on Facebook or on something else and I can listen to it like really fast. And it's 
sounds normal to me, where it, when I put it on normal speed, it's like they're going so slow. But even though New Orleans is part of the South, it actually is like its own little country, kind of, you know, uh, and everybody like you, mm-hmm. you have Creole and you have Cajun. And so, yes, they talk extremely fast. If you ever watched The Water Boy, how the one guy who no one understood what he was saying, but he was talking really, really fast. It, we talk fast, but it's uh, where I'm from. Most of my family, we were taught to articulate our words. So we still talk fast, but we articulate our words. So it's it's a crazy combination. I did have some that didn't speak. Uh, they did Creole. And I was like, I didn't understand what they were saying and often got in trouble because they thought I was joking. <laughs> so. <laughs> Well, um, I've had the privilege of being on your podcast and being interviewed by you. And um, I just absolutely adore you. You have such a big life, such a big personality, and you help so many people. Um, And I just would love for you to share with everybody more about what, what drives you, what got you to be so confident and so able to do everything that, that you have accomplished. Well, one of those big things is like, I went through a lot of abuse, uh, childhood, physical, sexual, and emotional abuse, uh, was homeless at 15, uh, put out at the age of 15 by my mother. Uh, then I end up getting pregnant at 16, had my daughter at 17. And one of the things that I was super determined for is to never allow my daughter to experience anything that I went through. For me, it was that piece of I'm ending generational trauma. I'm in, in, um, ending the the uh, the hurt, the pain that follows because no one actually wakes up and say, I'm going to be abuser. No one wakes up and say, I'm going to hurt someone. It's usually hurt people that hurt people. And I think for me, my father, and I actually had recently sent out an email to my my tribe talk, tell, sharing that story that I never really talked about, that my dad never had, you know, got beyond the first grade. And he was my lifesaver because when my mother put me out at 15, I turned to my father. Now, mind you, I had not lived with my father since I was young, you know, like I don't even remember at one or two years old living with my dad because my mom left. But he was always a giver at heart. And I think I, I know for a fact that I've taken after his personality. So I use that love, that energy, the giving spirit to really say, I don't want other people I'm around to ever feel that. I don't want people that I'm helping to, or even touching when they leave for me, I want them to always leave different than when they came to me in the first place. And so when it came to my daughter, I wanted to make sure that she realized no matter what you, how you start, does not mean that's how you end. So I got my first, uh, I got my undergrad at 30 because by that time I'm like, she's old enough where she can be at home. She's 13. I can get my undergrad. And then from there, I went and got my first master's, second master's, and then pretty much I'm an ABD for my doctorate. But I wanted her to always know that she can accomplish anything she puts her mind to. Like the only person that limits her is herself. And uh, I think I did a pretty good job because she lives in Germany and she's doing her thing and she, you know, not affiliated with the being in the military. And she just, she's truly my child. Like she is confident. She's comfortable in her own skin. She knows that she's beautiful inside and out. And that was my mission is to really make sure that I teach her that she is wonderful as who she is and don't let anyone ever make you feel like you're less than and that's how I anybody that comes across my path that's what I always want them to know wow your daughter is so lucky to have you as her mama she said that to me recently it was so funny Um, I'm like she's like mom she's like you know what uh, what, how did she say you should be proud of yourself? And I'm like, what are you talking about? She's like, because you raise a daughter that literally is um, like, cause when she was, when she was here visiting me, she was attempting to go back to Germany. And of course with COVID, there was so many issues. She went to the airport three times and each, like the first two times she kept getting sent back. Like she had her ticket was there and they were like, oh no, you're, you know, it was just a lot of mess. And instead of her getting upset, she, I always talk about what do you have control of in that situation? Because what is anger going to get you? Yes, you can have your emotions and go through that. But then the next thing you need to think about is, okay, 
What do I have control of? And that's what I have to focus on. So she actually did that and was able to get her next, her rapid test, get on her plane the next day. But she was like, mom, you should be proud that you, you know, proud of yourself. And I was just like, oh, okay. So yeah, she tells me that a lot, you know, but I'm proud of her for being the young woman that she is. Oh, that's amazing. And what does she do in Germany? So she actually works on base. She works with the child development center. She's always had a passion for, for kids. And in fact, in high school, she did the, the, the track that deals with child development. And so where like, it was one of those schools that had like a vocational as well. And so that was one of her passions and something that she went for and she's been doing it ever since. So she absolutely loved working with babies and raising them to be confident little, little be- beings and teaching parents how to be good parents. It's crazy. I'm like, and she's not even a mom, <laughs> but she's like, I just used the skills you taught me, mom. And I'm like, okay, if it works. <laughs> That's so, awesome. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought you were going to say uh, uh, helping them become tiny little beasts. You were saying beings and I'm like, beasts? <laughs> nope, human beings, little human beings. Yep. So that, you know, because nowadays, oh, unfortunately, so yeah, unfortunately, I see so many parents, they attempt to make up for the losses that they have. And instead, what they're doing is creating entitled children that don't understand oh, yeah. what no looks like. And then I have to now see them as an adult in my office as a mental health therapist because of the fact that they can't handle stress. They don't know how to make decisions when a crisis, what they assume is a crisis, you know, a crisis is something different for everybody. When something tragic happens or something that is mildly distressful, they don't know how to bounce back from that. And it's because they never were taught. And, and so I, when I look at my daughter and I think about the things, the lessons that I taught her, I have to be proud that that's what, how I always instilled in her. Okay. Let's look at what do you have control of, but it all starts when she was younger and and ensuring communication was important. Like I allowed her to communicate her feelings, even if it was something where she was upset with me about she, it was okay for her to say, mom, I was upset. You, you know, hurt my feelings today. And we talk about it. And that was for me, super important ever since she was 13, that was our, our thing, no matter what happens when you, I say or do something that's going to upset you, because I probably will do that. Um, it's okay to come and talk to me about it. And then, you know, and it's been where she learned how to speak up for herself and be confident. That's awesome. So let's talk a little bit about, um, I know what veterans are. Um, they're amazing. And I love veterans. Um, they, you know, keep us safe and free and all of those good things. I know what aspiring entrepreneurs are, but I'd like to know how you identify high achievers, because those are the three uh, types of people that you work with. So how do you identify high achievers? High achievers to me are uh, individuals who have been successful in their business some way or another. They've had success, what they consider success. They are one that are eager. They're able to make decisions. They're able to, uh, to get things done. They're not, they're not individuals who are lazy and don't have the thrive or the drive to do anything. They're not people who I have to pull to to get things accomplished or they say I have this desire, but they're not willing to do anything about it. They're individuals who know they want to become entrepreneurs. They just need a systematic step-by-step way to get there. And those are individuals I work with. So I work with people like that are nurses, like, okay, I've been a nurse for so-and-so years. I'm tired. I'm ready to go here. A person who's been in corporate, I've been working this nine to five or working this corporate job and, you know, for over here, but now I'm ready to do my own thing and find my purpose. So these are people who have uh, climbed the ladder and there's, they've been successful in the field that they're in, and now they're ready to be successful in their own business. And so that's how I identify a high achiever. Oh, I love that. So the, do you find um, that those people are the easiest to work with because they are driven or are there special challenges because of their drive? 
So it's twofold, right? They're easy to work with because they are motivated and they're driven. The, the, the main issue is the beginning, the foundation, the part of taking all these great ideas because they're so, they are successful. They're used to being able to do a lot of things. And how do I hone in that one special thing that I'm good at? And so when you're saying, okay, I need you to niche it down. I need you to narrow it down. Who's your focus? Oh, but I help everybody. That's beautiful. <laughs> However, based on your messaging, everybody's not going to come to you. So who exactly are you looking at serving, you know, kind of thing. And so I'm like, you have to allow the person to identify. You can't help everyone while we all would love that. We definitely have to narrow it down. And so with that being said, that has become, uh, that's the big, once we get that part straightened out, the rest of it is super easy. So it's really getting that messaging and the niche down and who your audience is. And after that, it's, it's clean. Uh, I would say smooth sailing from there. So, and that's one of the things that I always work with my clients from the very beginning is that laying that foundation. I, I call, I call myself the foundation builder because I believe in laying a good foundation in order to grow. You can't build anything from a rocky foundation. I absolutely love that because, um, I, I just had this conversation with somebody myself, which is, those, and, and I consider myself a high achiever. I am very driven. I take fast action and I'm not always great about building a foundation because I'm like, I could, I could skip that part and just get stuff done. But when I've done that, which I have done many times in my life, guess what? It crumbles very quickly. It's yes, not steady. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. You are a high achiever and you will fit <laughs> definitely into the category. Right. And it's true because we know that we can skip, like get stuff done, but we often forget about that laying that smooth foundation. So that's the part where I have to scale it back. Okay. Even the ones who say, well, I think I know who I serve. I serve female entrepreneurs. Or I say, okay. So let's, let's be very clear. Now, what are you helping them with all the things? Um, yeah. No, <laughs> not every woman has the same issue. So let's get a little bit clearer about who, what your niche is, who, what is the issue, the problem that you're solving. And so it's literally helping from that standpoint, smoothing out their messaging as well. Yeah, I love all of that. So let's talk a little bit about aspiring entrepreneurs who you can't, it can't yet be identified necessarily as a high achiever, or do you only work with those that you can identify that are high achievers? So what uh, I are often, there those that come to you that could fool you? I don't know. You, I don't know if you can be fooled. <laughs> I know, you know, my little spider hat. Comes they on seem like they could be high achievers, but they're going to drag their feet. Yeah. Well, you know, one of the things I do is I do a vetting process and I actually say, you know, usually I just stick with high achievers and including um, military veterans, because, you know, if I uh, don't put in most military veterans, they're so humble. Um, we and I'm put say we are so humble that we don't think about the fact of all the things that we do and we don't consider ourselves a high achiever. And oh, I yeah. often have to remind them. Uh, do you realize what all you've accomplished? And so that's why, you know, it's, I'm actually in a process of totally separating some of their stuff. So on my website, I'll have like a link that just says veterans and it'll be their own separate page. That stuff that's just catered towards them because of the fact that there is certain things that you learn as a veteran, learn as a military person, that's different. But back to your question of aspiring um, entrepreneur Every person that contact comes to me, I always do a vetting process and I actually have a conversation with them. So I do like a consultation call and find out where they are currently. Are they, you know, have never had a business? Do they want to have a business? What things have they already worked on? What things they haven't? And if it's a person's like, well, you know, I, I don't, I'm not working on anything and I just want to, you know, start a business and this sounds really good. And I just want to see what you have they're not really serious. They're more like fishing. And I know for a fact that with, because I am so busy with my schedule, I have to be very clear of who I work with. And so that's why I put aspiring because some people don't even identify them themselves as a high achiever because they don't know. And when I do talk to them, I'm like, yeah, nope, you're, you're a high achiever, you know, so <laughs> 
that's the part that really makes a big, huge difference. So I'm very clear and let them know if I can't work with them, who I can refer them to. I won't just go, nope, you're not my client, because I really believe that everyone right. deserves to have someone that can work with them and have that coach. For oh, them. yeah, I totally agree. So I totally agree with you. Mm-hmm. So for example, um, some of the people that I have seen um, who don't realize that they're high achievers, I love that you've identified veterans because they're humble. Um, I think a lot of women are the same way, especially those who have taken some time off to be moms. And a lot of women have had to make that tough decision during COVID time because they, you know, they needed to stay home and, now they're like, well, maybe, you know, uh, I'm no longer a high achiever. I'm, uh, you know, I, I'm just, a, I'm just a mom. I hear that a lot. Do you see some of that happening and how do you help those people? Oh yeah. I'm like just a mom. Okay. Well, let's talk about the skills that <laughs> requires to be a mom. Okay. Let's, <laughs> let's go through all that. So what do you do? So you organize your time, you do this, you do that. And then you, you know, and then after I'm done, what I help them do is identify those areas that they're doing. And they're like, yeah, I am a high achiever. I am a badass. Exactly. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, kind of thing, because that's why I, I had to separate because there, I actually had one client one time that reached out to me and she was like, I'm not sure if I'm a high achiever, but I I work really hard and I'm determined. And when I talked to her, I'm like, you are, I know as a woman, we often don't consider ourselves that like when people read my bio, oftentimes I'm like waiting for them to introduce the person. I'm like, Oh, that was me. Like, cause I just do the thing. I don't think about like, for me, I'm always focused on what's next because I want to bring more value to my clients compared to me saying, Oh, I want to do this. I want to be on media. So that way I can just be, you know, show myself. And I'm like, no, it's, it's, there's a purpose. It's strategic. It's to help other people. So, yeah. I love that. Um, because I experienced that a lot also people, I, I just think women, and now I know veterans, I didn't even realize veterans, but now that you say that, I can see that they are humble, that they don't see the tremendous value that they have. I mean, to make it through just boot camp alone. Um, I was just watching um, American Idol and a uh, lady came on. Did, uh, have you watched it recently? Because I, I think it was this week or last week. And a lady came on who is in the military. And I can't remember which uh, military she's in, which branch she's in. But she was like a lead singer in the military band or whatever. And really beautiful woman, beautiful voice and very sexy. OK, she was really, really sexy. And um, Katy Perry is one of the judges. And after the lady was done singing and stuff, Katy Perry's like, I think I could be a lead singer in just like she is. And one of the other judges, um, um, I think it was Lionel Richie turned to her and said, you'd have to go through boot camp. And Katy said, oh, yeah, I couldn't do that. (laughs) (laughs) I flunked out of that. And I thought that was so funny and so telling. Because there are so, I mean, people in the military, it's not one thing they have to do. They, they don't just have to be intelligent. They don't just have to be driven. They don't just have to be fit. I mean, you got to have so many things. Yes. And, and the thing about it is like, I think that's why we struggle with understanding. Like I came in specialized, I'm an officer. So I already came in with my job, but there's some people that don't come in with their particular job. And then of course, as you go up, you end up being in charge of a, um, like a flight or a unit or just a bunch of people. And you forget to take about that part. Cause you're like, Oh, well, I have some people say, well, I'm just a, a, a maintainer. Like I just, you know, put body, you know, keep the planes, you know, in the air and, you know, keep them cranked up and fix them. And then it's like, but you forget about the fact that you're leading a hundred other people to do that or 500 people to do that. Or, you know, like I actually was helping one of them transition from uh, their retiring and he's like, oh, I help 165. And I was like, really? Okay. Let's go through each unit that you have been a chart and it ended up being like 1100 and something. And he's like, oh yeah, I did do that. But we just do it without 
thinking about it. Sometimes you're voluntold. Uh, you'll end up at the, like, I'd be sitting at my desk. Hey, I need you to go do this briefing for this general. Okay. You know, you just get your stuff up and go and you don't have time for like, you can be nervous if you want to, but it's, it's not going to serve you any good. You still got to <laughs> do it. And so you just, you know, 19 year olds having to brief generals and people that are super high ranking. It's like in the military standpoint, a general is the same as like almost, I'm not going to say equivalent to the present, but you know, they're pretty high up there where you have that honor of respect. And so when people like you have a young person that has to do that. So we had to learn confidence and just how to just show up. So I often get people asking me like, oh, are you going to be nervous? And I'm like, uh. Huh? You know, and it's like, I'm not <laughs> attempting to be funny, but I have to speak in no. front of high power people all the time. So after a while, it's just second nature. Like you'll be sitting there minding your business and your name's called. You're like, oh, and then you just have to speak up for whatever you're talking about. So after doing that so many years and you just kind of just go with the flow and just go, okay. You know, so yeah, you forget sometimes like we have to do this report at the end of the year. It's, uh, for us, it's the Air Force is called um, Officer Performance Report. And oftentimes I'd be forgetting what I did for the year because I'm just doing it. And so people go, yeah, but you've done this. I'm like, oh, yeah, I did do that, didn't I? And you've done this, I did, <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, like you literally forget just like, you know, school and writing books and different things. Like I forget until somebody say, oh, my gosh, I saw you in a magazine. I was. Oh, I was in the mix. <laughs> you know, it's crazy. Like, yeah. <laughs> so you just do. The I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now. I know a lot of people who are very accomplished, who have done a lot. I know no one who has accomplished everything you have. I, I'm not, I am not exaggerating. I know wow. no one who, ha- who has done and is doing everything you are doing. Well, thanks, Kathy. And I know, you know, a lot of people, especially with all that you do. So I appreciate that. Thank I do you. know a lot of people and I don't know anybody that does as much as you do. Wow. So when, when you're helping somebody like a nurse or somebody in a corporate world um, or a veteran, when you're helping them transition Mm -hmm. from whatever they have been doing to whatever they're going to be doing, can you give us, and I know this is asking a lot, so, you know, you you might want to summarize or whatever you want to do that, but how can you help them? make that shift? Because I think it scares a lot of people. So how can they overcome, you know, if they haven't been in the military, like you are, if they're not a veteran, they don't have that courage already. Um, How do you help them be able to make that transition? Most definitely. So I always start with mindset. There's actually a little exercise because I am also Mm -hmm. certified as a hypnotherapist. Um, But um, because of that training, I'm able to like, there's a little exercise I do. It's not like no full induction or anything else like that, but I'm able to help a person go into their like subconscious and, and I call it the road. It's the journey to self-discovery and look at their mindset around money, success, uh, their boundaries, how they show up in the world. Like if, if I say that I want to be a seven figure entrepreneur and my, my brand is to service high achievers or entrepreneurs, like, you know, people who are doing things and I'm showing up with ragged jeans and a torn shirt, I'm inconsistent in the way that I'm showing up compared to what I say I want to be. And then also with their viewpoint about themselves. And it's a five minute little exercise that I do what really breaks away everything. It's no longer them telling me with their mouth. I'm able to actually hear and see exactly what they have going on. So I have them, I interpret it for them. And then we're able to get through the, the, like their mindset shift, like they understand like, oh my gosh, I do have an issue around money. Oh my gosh, I do. I want to be successful. I said, but I really don't believe it. I hear my mom or my dad or someone telling me that I would never achieve this or that. And so we break through those barriers and then we can start moving forward. The other big thing is I always start where my client is. I do not move them in a direction that's not, they're not ready for. And, and I don't do a one trick size thing. That's why I have a systematic approach. I move a person in and out of my system based on who they are and where they are. So it allows them to feel comfortable on that journey. Like I'm, I can tell you now I'm a therapist. I talk to people all the time. I am a podcast host. Talk to people all the time. I'm a speaker and trainer. Talk to people all the time, but I do not like doing Facebook lives. 
it just is what it is. So when I have a coach or someone that says to me, and I'm a coach and I have coaches, every coach I feel has to have a coach if you really want to continue to grow. Oh yeah. And when I have one that tells me, oh, go do Facebook lives and do two Instagram stories. I'm like, oh, okay, but I'm not doing it because they're not listening to the fact that I have said (laughs) numerous times, I don't like doing Facebook lives. Um, And then I've had the same type of coach say, oh, well, you're not visible. I'm like, oh, the fact that my podcast is international. I mean, like in countries all over the world, I'm getting called by multiple people uh, that I'm in newspaper articles. I'm actually going to be on Ticker News in Australia um, and um, CBS and NBC and a cup Fox that's not visibility. And in magazines, that's not visit. Oh, okay. I guess Facebook lives is visibility. Um, so I've learned to listen to my clients and not do the same thing that I've experienced that I did not like. And so my, my clients often say that I appreciate you so much, not recommending things that I know that I'm not comfortable with. Now, mind you, I do push them to areas I know that they're comfortable with, but it's baby steps. It's not pushing you off the cliff yeah. and go, go fly, baby, go fly, bird. And you haven't even gotten your <laughs> wings yet, right? So it's really, that's mm-hmm. that's my mm-hmm. style. And that's how I help move them. And it's seamless without them realizing that they've accomplished so much. And so I often have to reflect back and go, you've done this, this, and I'm like, oh my gosh, yes, I did. So, yeah. <laughs> So, that's, so that's you me. sound like, oh my gosh, you, you've got to be one of the best coaches ever because you have so many tools in your toolbox that you can just reach in and use when, you know, okay, well, that one didn't work for this person or that one is not going to work for this person based on what I already know about them. Let me use this one. And you can help people shift with all those different tools. Monica, oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm not a one trick pony. I I literally tell people I don't (laughs) like it's the same as my therapy style, like actually in the military as a licensed therapist, I actually have more clients that actually come to our front desk and be like, Hey, uh, so what's that? Um, okay, tell me all the people you have working here. And they go, yep, no, that's her. That's the one. Cause you know, of course, most times they can't pronounce my name or they were like, Hey, I was told by so so I need to come and see her because she's good. And I'm like, oh my gosh, people, I don't have room in my schedule, but it's because they know that I know how to break through whatever they're going through because I focus on them and not focus on what I want them to do. Because what I have seen, even with therapists and coaches, they learn one particular style or a couple and they get clients to fit into their model, but they don't ever take their model to fit it towards the client. And that's what I have found. So that's why when people read my accolades, I'm like, oh, I did all that. But it's like, because I'm not doing it for self, I'm doing it for my clients to make sure that I'm able to reach them where they are and then help them actually grow based on their style. Because we all are different. We've all have experiences in our life that have, you know, some has caused us to be stuck. And how do you get rid of that that voice that's telling you, you're not going to be anything. And you're, I don't even know why you're starting this. You're, you know, I can, I help them break through all that. So. That's awesome. That is so fabulous. So your 12 step model, did, did you name it 12 steps because of the other 12 step programs or did you just have to have 12 Because it's 12 letters. (laughs) It's 12 letters. Oh, so is it, is it decide to move? Is it that yep. 12 letters or are there? Yep. Decide oh. to move is 12 letters. Yep. That came to me Clever. in 2007. Like literally it wasn't me. Cause I'm a very spiritual person and I like volunteer. And I'll tell you the quick story of that. I volunteered to help this uh, business owner who was literally making a hundred dollars here, hundred dollars there, very inconsistent with his money. Brilliant genius guy. He was my first high achiever. I can say, and he was one that can put a computer together. And it was back in the day when, the, you know, they had the water cooler uh, or CPUs that was water for gamers. So back in like 2007, 2006, 2007. And so he didn't know whether he wanted to service gamers and people were paying $10,000 or more for this system, or if he wanted to service corporations, or if he wanted to do like home visits and th- things like that. He was just all over the place. His shop looked a mess. Um, sometimes I'm like, what are you wearing? <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> 
And I just, you know, he was a friend of mine. So I just started volunteering and helping him like organize his stuff. I mean, like I will work during the day, go there in the afternoon and be like, okay, let's get this shop together. Okay. Let's figure out what you want to do. Um, so you're building this computer. What is this for? Like I literally started having, asking questions and really started helping him think about things in a different way. And by the time that I left this guy, like literally within six months went from making a hundred, like random hundred dollars here, there to making six figures because he became very clear and focused on what he wanted to do. Now, mind you, this was the beginning of my be beginning of me doing coaching, but I didn't understand what system or strategy I was doing. I just did what came natural. So when I had to do a presentation on the, it, the instructor was like, you're a change agent, you're going into a company, you're, you know, helping them organize and make some drastic changes or, you know, help them streamline what they already do. Now you need to do a presentation on what you did. Um, okay. And so for him, it was like, you really didn't have to do that, but I had already did this right. Um, later on, what came to find out is when I actually, um, I prayed, I was like, Lord, I got to do this presentation in the morning. Cause I'm a last minute person at times I have to do this presentation in the morning. What do I do? And all of a sudden, all these little words started coming, like just dropping in my spirit. So I was writing them down, like writing one word at a time. And the next, I slept for a couple hours, woke up and I organized, I put a PowerPoint to each letter, like a little, you remember clip art? So <laughs> I put a clip art to each, le each oh, word. Yeah. So D was like determination. <laughs> so I had a little clip art that rep rep kind of represented determination. E for expectations, had a little, you know, clip art for what I thought expectation looked like. And I did that for all of them. And then I took, had one slide that I wrote all the words down. And when I wrote them out, it spelled decide to move. And that was the, me going, wow. oh my gosh, it, I actually did. This is the steps that I took to help this guy. And then when it was time for me to formulate my business, when I came back to the States in 2018, of course, I had to go back, uh, keep that name. So yeah, that's what it all comes from. So I dip people in and out based on that. And always it's like, what's your determination? Like for those high achievers, how determined are you to make that happen? What, you know, and then what's your expectations you expect to I get at the end? I love that. So I moved them through in and out of that based on where they are in their, in their uh, journey of entrepreneur. Yes. I love that story. That is amazing. Thank you. Thank you. you know, that, that's insp that is very inspirational and it does feel very spiritual that you were, that you were given that message. Thank you. Yes. I, I could, I could do it myself, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, is that what you mean? Like you help this guy narrow his niche and really focus in, is that what you mean when you say you help people find the jewel inside of them? Yes, because we all, well, what I'm, what, for me, we all have special gifts and oftentimes those gifts are taken away from us based on experiences of things that we have. Also little nugget, bijou means jewel. Um, <laughs> little side note. <gasps> It's oh, French, I didn't so it know means jewel. That. That, mm -hmm. that is so clever. So I always tell my dad, thank you for naming, you know, giving me the 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 name of Bijou, because that's what I do. I always look for the jewel inside of everyone. We all have special gifts, and it's a matter of just finding it and really helping people bring it out. Uh, oftentimes our when we're born, we're so special, have all these gifts. We're, you know, daredevils, like your your podcast is called Dare to Leap. We jump off of, you know, buildings and beds and couches. And, and it's up to our parents that set those limitations. And some set limitations that are so stringent that a child is afraid to move. But we don't, don't always start off with that. And so for me, it's about bringing that back out for you, those jewels that you have that got lost. And so helping you define what that looks like for you. So that way you can truly shine and be the person that you're meant to be. And so that's what that, that mean by, by finding the jewel in each, each person that I meet. I don't think I'm ever going to think of the word jewel the same again. I think I'm going to be calling it how to find the bijou inside. <laughs> <laughs> you can share I love that so that. much. <laughs> It's going to be my secret word that I know and nobody else does. <laughs> mm -hmm. Unless they're like, oh, you speak French. Oh, and then they'll, they'll say something French. You're like, oh, no, that we. Yes, we, we. Oui, oui. <laughs> <Ooh>, la, la. <laughs> exactly. 
<laughs> when I went to Paris, it was so funny. They were like, uh, bijou. And I was like, yeah. And they go, it also means kiss in certain countries. And I was like, yeah, well, I have to be careful what I say because I'm not kissing no any and everybody. But uh, so they go, do you know French? And I go, yes, bijou. <laughs> That's the best that's as you're gonna get. And they just start laughing. Cause like bijou, like if you go to cert- like certain stores and you ask for bijou, they go out and they get the rare jewels. They go to the back and they get those those oh, jewels wow. that are very rare, not that's on display. And so that's one thing that's beautiful about that of you know, it it represents the same thing of who I serve, like helping people find that jewel, something that's hidden, that's not on display. Most people can't even see it, but it's deep down inside. And it's bringing that one thing back out or those multiple things back out. So that way people can actually be the light that they're meant to be. Oh, I love that. And everybody has this. Do you agree? Everybody has this. most definitely. Some people may go, oh, but serial killers don't. Did they, were they born serial killers? No. Or was there circumstances and situations that put them that? That's like a whole nother conversation that we can be on because I actually yeah. had a conversation <laughs> with someone about narcissism and, you know, I was explaining to her my viewpoint of it. And she was like, oh my gosh, I've never heard anybody explain it and break it down the way you did, but it makes perfect sense. And I'm like, yes, most definitely. So, you know, because like people go, oh, people who have narcissism can't be helped and there's they're hopeless. And I'm like, well, if you ever listen to a person who's a narcissist story, um, to me, it's or even a person who has a personality disorder, you think about it when they, they went through a horrific life, like, you know, abuse, neglect, just all the things. And they had to learn from a young age, this coping mechanism and to survive that at a young age. And so I'm like, and I always have to tell them kudos on you for learning how to survive at a young age in an environment that really could have right. broke you and, and like, not just broke you, but killed you, but you survived out of that. Right. However, now let's look at the other part yeah. that, that coping mechanism that you learned is no longer serving your purpose as an adult. So let's look at some strategies that's going to help yeah. you be able to have a healthier relationship learn how to love yourself and no longer mm-hmm. have to resort to the things that you have been using to in today's world. And every last one of them that I've worked with be like, you're the first person that understood me. And yes, I want to get help. So it's really about starting where they are and then wow. helping them, you know? And so for me, that's, that's where I look at yeah. each person that cross my path as a human being that just needs support and love and be able to show them what they are capable of giving. Now you have some people who don't want to get help and that's perfectly fine. That's still their right, but at least they know that it's there. Yeah. uh, You just answered the question that I was going to ask you. What about those people who are just, they can't even face that they have an issue? Um, yeah. Are those the people that you're talking about who don't mm-hmm. want help because they, mm-hmm. I mean, you got to know that you have an issue. Mm-hmm. You have to acknowledge that before you can take that step. Yeah, most okay. definitely. I mean, it's that, like that's what I thought. Um, yeah. It's what's comfortable, right? You get used to something that's comfortable, even if it's not good or healthy, you go by what's comfortable. And once you go to that level of comfort, you know, it's kind of like, it's scary to change the way that, I mean, I've been this way for my entire life because I've had to survive. Don't you understand? This is what I had to do to survive. And it's like, yes, I do. However, that survival mode is no longer serving you good because when you, when you're used to, you know, I'm about to do a brain activity or help uh, education. So forgive me, but our brains develop. No, I love back. it. <laughs> yeah. Our brains develop from the back to the forward. So guess what develops before our frontal lobe, the part that makes you make rational decision, consequence, uh, the consequences, you know, any of those, dis- those functions is our limpic. I mean, our amygdala, which is the almond shape is that's why it's called amygdala. It's our fight, flight, or freeze part of our brain. So we are, we struggle with, so a person who's been abused stays stuck in a fight, flight, or freeze, which is survival. They get stuck in survival. So anytime someone does something that they see is threatening, they go to that place. And when your frontal lobe is offline, you have no idea literally what you're doing sometimes. And I know that's hard for people who are in their frontal lobe to understand that. 
but literally when a person gets in this, it's like, I, I often say this, imagine going down, walking down the street, minding your business and a car is coming at you high speed. You're not going to be like, oh my gosh, is that a Ferrari? Oh, that girl, that's my car. Oh, <laughs> no, you probably either will like be so it's stricken that you stop, right? Or you're going to run out the way. And then once you calm down, you'll be like, did you see that car almost hit me? You're not going to stand in the middle of the street talking about how great their rims are. Ooh, that's a cute guy. Girl, did you see a ring? Like, you're not going to do that, right? So when a person is constantly in that survival of fight, flight, or freeze, they don't have the ability to uh, rationally think about did this person intend to hurt me? They go straight into you're hurting me. You're intending to hurt me. This reminded me of when my mom or my dad or my uncle right. or whoever did to me. So they're stuck in that place. And so yeah. literally it's about understanding that. Um, it doesn't mean that you need to stay in that relationship if you're one. So please understand, I'm not ever saying that to a person. Um, just understand that that person does need help. And you're not the person to, to if you're not a licensed therapist or someone in that realm, I wouldn't say that somebody needs to stay in a relationship in order to help them heal. No, you don't become that person's punching bag. I mean, I actually had a narcissist that attempted. Literally attempted. sometimes. Yes, exactly. But I had one mm-hmm. that attempted to date me. And it was, I said attempt because it didn't, he didn't Ooh. get very far. I was like, you know what I do for a living, right? I'm not sure who you're trying to gaslight, but you got the wrong one, homie. <laughs> you got the wrong one. So I was like, you need to go get some therapy more than once a month. It needs to be more consistent. Like literally. So, and actually this person was getting therapy like, once every two months and he literally called his therapist was trying to see if he can get in more often because of the fact that uh because i said it from a loving place but i'm like you're not re- you know you can date all you want but it's not going to be this girl right here because i love myself too much and i have too much confidence to allow somebody to tear that down i've been through too much of my own journey to now resort to letting someone who's not done healing to try to attempt to hurt me so um hasta la vista and take your Monica, clothes. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> take your clothes. <laughs> okay. That just went a whole different place than I thought it was going to go. <laughs> yeah, take your clothes with you. Don't be leaving nothing behind. <laughs> oh, my God. I could listen to you tell stories all day long. You are not only brilliant and beautiful. You are oh. hilarious. Thank you. <laughs> I'm just I like life is so short you know you have to have fun and just be you so yeah this is me in the flesh (laughs) it it, it is it is you in the flesh so I know there are people listening to this right now going I have got to work with Monica so how do people get in touch with you most definitely so I'm on like different platforms under decide to move or Monica MBG so the easiest way is for them just to go to my website decide www.decide to move.com and that's d-e-c-i-d-e-t-o-m-o-v-e remember 12 letters decide to move.com <laughs> and it has all the ways that they can reach me has my email, has my uh, consultation link. It has everything that they can do to schedule, has my books there. It has like everything. So my website is a pretty functional place and there's even freebies there that they can grab. I'm in the process of updating and changing some stuff um, on my website. So like your anything that you do should be living and breathing and growing constantly like you are. So um, I will be making some updates, but so they may visit one day and go, Hey, it's different tomorrow. I mean, same colors. My brand colors are definitely there. Um, format is just definitely there, but how to work with me, it's going to be changing. Okay. Great to know. And I totally agree with you. Your website has to be a living, breathing thing to keep up with, especially you, you are moving and shaking. You are changing this world. You know, I talk about wanting to change the world and I am doing it one person, one step at a time. You're doing it like a tsunami. (laughs) <laughs> I, I, you know, I feel like I have a calling and, you know, when the Lord gives it to you, he pushes you out there quicker than you think about, and you don't have time to be scared. You just hold on and be like, okay. And that's, that's basically where I am. I'm like, okay, where are you sending me now? 
okay. You know, so, and that's, for me, that's what I attempt to do is just to kind of like hold on, embrace it and say, okay, it's going to be a heck of a ride. And I'm going to take some great people along with me to push them forefront. Um, Cause I'm, underneath all this I'm a person that likes to push other people in the front and me being be behind cheerleading like hey girl you got this and then it's like why I keep gotta be in the front <laughs> why can't I be hiding in the back of the classroom and then just support them you know throw them a note that be like you got this girl so I have learned how to just stop it and just embrace it and just move forward and just do what I have to do because it's not for me it's for other people so that's where I am Yeah, other people definitely need you, Monica. So um, we'll have that in the link for the show notes. Um, and it's super easy to remember also. Monica, thank you so much for spending all this time with me today. I so appreciate you and all you do for the world. Thank you. You too, Kathy, because you're doing some amazing things too, creating some um, amazing VAs. So thank you for all that you do and just always being a beacon of light. So anytime that I can be here for you, you just let me know. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Dare to Leap. Say hello and access additional resources at virtualexperttraining.com. There you'll be able to connect with Kathy to share your feedback and join her community. Join us again soon on Dare to Leap. Until then. Mm-hmm.